In three places, the sages say, "Kashem she'ain partufem shal bnei adam domim zelazeh kachin datam shavim zelazeh kol echad yesh lo dea b'fnei atzmo." Just like every human face is individual and unique, and no human who ever lived will look like any other human who ever lived. So, to the ideas of each person are different, and the personality is unique. This is what our sages teach. I wanted to pivot for a moment and talk about grief. Uh, grief is counterintuitive. Many people are familiar with what happens. Sometimes there's uh, a couple, usually an older couple, and one partner dies. And it's not long until the other partner dies often. And it's been studied, and it's known that grief is something that increases our anxiety and stress, something that reduces our immune response, and something that shortens our lifespan. So grief kills us. Uh, it's odd, uh, practically, but also evolutionarily, that our response to loss should be one that shortens our lives. How, how could that be? Why would we evolve um, in this seemingly maladaptive way? Uh, in his book, The Evolutionary Origins of a Good Society, Nicholas Christakis offers three possibilities in endorsing the, the last one. And, and so I wanted to share them because it's relevant to our topic of, of community today. The first is that when you lose a relative, um, there's a sense of total isolation and a desire to want to bridge out and connect. And so grief is actually the mechanism by which we reach out to others for support, not unlike the model of Shiva, where when someone is in grief, people come to visit their home to make sure that they remain grounded and connected. The response to loss is, is to connect. Another possibility is that when we lose a loved one, the extreme pain is, in or, is developed in order to motivate us to care for the people still living. It's to make sure we take good care of those who are still alive so we won't go through grief again. The third possibility is that it's a byproduct. It's not, um, it's not crucial to the system, but a sign of the way the system works, which is that we've evolved together to be together, not alone, but in communities. And all of the qualities of any individual human have been developed in relationship with every other human. You know, there are sort of two universals about all human societies. We all live, for now, on Earth, and that we share one planet, and that we all live with other people. No one lives alone. Humans don't live in caves as solitary creatures, but they live in tribes and clans and families and societies together. And so because we're wired up to be together, there's great pain when there's a cutting of those ties and when there's loss. And so the pain is just a signal of how important being together is. I think that's right. And now is a time when we're experiencing a lot of different grief, griefs. There's the grief of loss. So many people have lost loved ones and relatives. And then there's the grief of our way of life and our plans and our hopes. And there's the grief of seeing the curtain rolled back, seeing how the sausage has made some of the more unsavory parts of society and how we're part of that system. But it's not necessarily the fault of others, but it's the design. We're part of it. There are all of those griefs, but grief is a sign that we have evolved together. You know, back to the statement of the sages that everyone is individual and unique, you might wonder why. It's actually an interesting thing. The reason <laughs> we're all different is so that we can recognize each other and form bonds. If we each looked exactly the same as every other person, There'd be no ability to love, to form friendships, to have conflicts, enemies. None of that would be possible if we're all the same. So actually, ironically, our individual identity is crucial to our forming of community. Uh, some people like to say that the only thing we have in common is that we're different. 
but I think that's not true. We all have difference in common, and that's what the sages are saying. But actually, it's that difference which allows us to enter into relationship. So we shouldn't think of difference as a pole and cohesion as the other pole. Difference is a prerequisite for the sort of cohesion that builds our societies. It was the 1530s in Rav Yosef Karo, the author of the Shulchan Aruch, not yet, was in Salonika, the Ottoman Empire, and was having a tikkun leil shavuot. It hadn't been done for hundreds of years, maybe, thousand, maybe a thousand years, and staying all up all night to do a mystical uh, order of learning for Shavuot night, and an angel came. And they did it two nights in a row, but on the first night, the angel rebuked them and said, you don't have a minion, you don't have a quorum, you only have seven people. You only have seven, not 10. Uh, I always take great comfort from this story, Providence. Sometimes we don't have a minion. And Rabbi Yosef Karo and his chevra, his crew, they were able to have a revelation from a magid, from an angel representing the divine presence on Shavuot night, even without a minion on the one hand. But on the other, there was a rebuke. You need 10. What's the point of Shavuot in community? What's the relationship between revelation and community? So on the second night, they had 10, and the revelation came sooner, and it was greater. Our entering into community is symbolized often in Hebrew by the two letters, kuf. A holy community or a transcendent community. So it's not just that we form bonds of community to support each other, but in a synagogue context, our community is supposed to be transcendent. Transcendent means to leave one's individual identity. And so the charge I'm taking, the pish push b'ma'asav, the sages always say in a difficult time, don't attribute causation, but reflect. It's a time for reflection. And so if we reflect, how can we form a transcendent community? And these are the two questions I'm leaving with how can we transcend and connect with each other in deep spiritual ways? And how can we form the kind of community that our bonds don't work at loggerheads, but help us to receive a greater revelation, a greater spiritual experience than if any of us were operating alone? Because after all, uh, that's how we've evolved. Kulam That only all of us can um, merit the kind of sanctity. Um, that's a challenge now because we're physically distant. Um, but I want so much uh, to overcome it together. <laughs>